My last Guardian column looked at the life lessons my mother taught me and how they informed my work and my life. When I was a child, my mother used to put on the song Young, Gifted and Black by Bob and Marcia, put my feet on hers and then dance us both around the living room. They're playing our song, she'd say. It was the early 70s. She was barely 30 and I was the youngest of three children she was raising alone. Struggling to believe there was a viable future for her children in a country where racism was on the rise and the economy was in the tank, she had seriously considered returning to Barbados. But instead, we danced around the living room, singing ourselves up, imagining a world in which we would thrive for which we had no evidence that we did have great expectations. Looking back, no amount of self-image reinforcement could have defied those odds. The space where those politics could be shared and the route through which I would come to it were paved by others whom I didn't know and mostly never met. In the 18th Brumaire of Louis Bonaparte, Karl Marx wrote, Men make their own history, but they do not make it as they please. They do not make it under self-selected circumstances, but under circumstances existing already, given and transmitted from the past. In 1999, the McPherson report into the racist murder of Stephen Lawrence made the concept of institutional racism mainstream. That was the year my first column appeared here. Yasmin Alibi Brown's column began appearing in The Independent, my first book was published, and Steve McQueen won the Turner Prize. The year before, Chris Ophelia won the Turner Prize. The year after, Zadie Smith's White Teeth came out. Now, the relationship between these events was not causal, but contextual. This detracts not one iota from these people's creative abilities or the hard work that made their success possible. Only the privileged and the naive believe people's achievements are purely the product of their own genius. It simply acknowledges that there have been others who were similarly able and hardworking for whom space had not been cleared. Ingratitude is the accusation launched by racists of black people in the public eye who have the audacity to highlight the racial injustice they see and have experienced. So I'd like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the youth who took to the streets and bereaved families who took to the courts who made my career possible. I sign off from this column at a dispiriting time with racism, cynicism and intolerance on the rise Wages stagnant and faith that progressive change is possible declining, even as resistance grows. Things look bleak. The propensity to despair is strong, but should not be indulged. Sing yourself up. Imagine a world in which you might thrive, for which there is no evidence, and then fight for it.